Today we'll be making our own bow maker. Keep watching! You can go ahead and pause here if you'd like and write down your list of materials and go and get your things together. This is easy beginner stuff. So here is my piece of wood. This is that one by four, 16 inches long. And then I have two dowels and the diameter is the same as the drill bit. These are some things that I got from Dirt Cheap. And there are, I think, back to school section, but it I think came probably from the, the Dollar Spot or Bullseye Playground originally. This is what I'm gonna use. And they're about a foot long. So I've just clipped off the end and I'm gonna sand it down. You wanna be sure that your dowels are smooth on the ends because you don't want it to snag your ribbon once you get it assembled. These were tapered on the bottom, so I already have a nice smooth edge on one side. I'm just gonna go ahead and sand those off on my sanding block. After that's done, I am taking my measurements from my board. There's probably a much easier way to do this, but since I'm new at this sort of thing, I'm just finding my middle point and gonna find placement for both of my drill holes. I figure, you know, measure twice, cut once. Isn't that how it goes? Well, I'll measure twice, drill once. So that's what I'm doing. You want these rods to be spaced out a little bit apart. They don't need to be touching completely. You need to have some room at the bottom and then as they go upward, they will taper where the, the ends touch or almost touch, whichever way you wanna do it. I didn't have anything to, to go by. I've never seen a bow maker in person. I'm just kinda of going off of memory. What I used, um, what I saw watching other people's videos when they use it. All right, so I'm gonna drill down, but not all the way through. That's why you see me drilling slowly a little bit so that we still have a solid back. Just gonna knock that sawdust out, use my sanding block to smooth it a little, and then it's a perfect fit. So they fit in there and they stand up straight even without any glue so far. All right, so then I'm gonna take my wood glue. I believe this is Elmer's and just put down in both of those holes. And I'm just gonna take another little stick that I have over here and swirl it around so that it's touching the sides and the bottom and just clean it up a little bit. You'd wanna do a better job cleaning than I did if you decide that you wanna paint this so it doesn't interfere with your paint job, but I'm not gonna paint mine. Then I'm just gonna seat those back down with my little tapered edges on the top. Get them where I want them and you can see here that I'm pushing them kind of toward each other. You can see that they're closer on the top than they are on the bottom. You can use a clamp to hold them there if you want to until they dry, but that's up to you how you wanna do it. And some of the glue does come out when you push the rods down in there, so I've just cleaned that up. And I think it says um, it takes about 30 minutes for the glue to dry, but to set up completely, wait for 24 hours. I wanted to go ahead and get this project finished, so I went ahead and did it all back to back, all my steps back to back. So now I'm just erasing off my pencil marks that I had on there before. And by the way, I did sand off that board that it's attached to, that one by four that was sanded to. I did that with some sanding block from Dollar Tree. Now I'm making one inch marks. I'm gonna do this down both sides. It's a 16 inch long board, so I'm going to have marks almost all the way to the bottom. But since my board wasn't exactly 16 inches, I had a little bit extra there little extra dead space, can you see that? And I'm gonna do something to personalize it in just a moment, so be sure that you stay tuned so you can see that. Thank you. 
Okay, so there's extra on the end. I'm just marking that off. Then I started with this fine tip Sharpie. Uh, it was not giving me the dark line that I wanted. For one thing, it was almost out of ink. And secondly, it's just not, you know, I need glasses. So it's not something that I could, I like to quickly get my crafts done and I don't wanna have to be squinting and bending around and getting in my camera shot when I'm trying to make my bows. So I'm gonna go back over that in just a moment with a, it's actually a glass marker that came from Dollar Tree, but it has a nice tip, so it gives it a better look. And there is that marker. These are inch lines. When you make your bows, you can make your loops by inches and make the tails by the inches by just laying them against the board and it makes it, it makes it a lot quicker. Then I'm just going to write in making it my own because that's my channel name. You can put whatever you want to. If you have leftover, if you cut your board exactly the right length, then you won't have to, you won't have this dead space like I did. But I was using a scrap that I already had from some things that my husband had made for me. So I went ahead and used it. So you might be wondering, why do I need a bow maker? You might not need a bow maker, but if you have small hands, if you have neuropathy, if you have arthritis, something like this might be the answer for you. So you can still get those pretty fluffy structured bows without putting yourself in a lot of pain or becoming uncomfortable because then if you're in pain you can't finish your project and you know that's no good so I thought about this when I was watching Olivia from Olivia's Romantic Home she has a wonderful crafting channel and she does all kinds of amazing things and she said that she has neuropathy and so that is what she uses her bow maker for and I thought well they're not very expensive. You can buy your own if you don't want to make it. I think I think that they're probably under $20, but for me, I thought, you know, I probably have the stuff around. I can do this myself. And I did, and you can see here that it is it's working. I'm going to show you how to make the bow. And since it's Halloween crafting time, I happen to have my Halloween ribbon handy, so just use whatever you have to make your bow. I'm just gonna show you an example of a really simple bow here. And I'm just making loops. I use my measurements. I think I have maybe five inch loops on each side so you can get your bow loops even and you can get your tails even. And then I'm just gonna cut that off. This particular ribbon is a wired ribbon. I was gonna use two wired ribbons to show you an example, but I decided let's try it with an unwired ribbon and see how it works with that. So this top ribbon doesn't have any wire in it, but I wanted to see how it would do. And this one is four inch loops on this black and white um, chevron. I used four inch loops. You can stack your bows. You can have them the same length or you can have them a little bit smaller so you can see the detail of the bow that's underneath and that's what I wanted to do here. You can see my son chit-chatting with me while I'm crafting. That is a common occurrence in my home for my kids to be down there with me in the basement in my little craft corner. Then I'm gonna take this pipe cleaner and just twist it together to hold it while I take it off so everything stays right where it should. Okay, so then there is my bow. Very first bow I made with my bow maker. I'm just gonna twist that around to the back so that will be the back of my bow now. I'm gonna fluff it out and then in just a minute, you'll see me dovetail the ends of my bow, and then it's ready to go for whatever project I wanna put it on. This was easy, and I really feel like this is something that you could do on your own. You can, you know, if you know somebody who has a drill who might help you, it's something that you could probably do on your own, and you may even have the 
materials already at home in your stash that you can use to make one. And it's the perfect time to do it because Christmas is coming and you gotta have those gorgeous bows on everything. Yeah, why don't you give it a try? I would love to hear if you're gonna try it and if you do, how it turned out for you. Subscribe for more budget-friendly craftiness and DIYs. We got lots more coming. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Bye.